you guys can hear me, uh, let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for somebody in the chat to kind of confirm um, if they're in or not. This is... Just double checking if I can hear myself. Anyone in the chat, if you can hear me? Okay, okay, it's working. Great. Sorry about that. Um, so what I'm what I was going to say is I was watching a lot of BYU previews for last night's game or yesterday's game against Duquesne, and that's a team that I don't even the media itself was not taking Duquesne very seriously. Um, it was they were speaking on a matter of presumption that they were going to win, and I think a lot of them actually spent more time talking about the next round matchup against Illinois than they were talking about Duquesne. And now, don't get me wrong, I mean, that could have been justified. Uh, Duquesne didn't exactly have a very strong season. I think they finished fourth in the Atlantic 10. Now, granted, the Atlantic 10 is a pretty decent conference in itself, but I, I believe they had three quad three losses, uh, one quad one win. Um, it's a team which, in all actuality, I'm just going to disagree with uh, Professor Healy. I think this should be a win that if the spread is nine, I've seen a spread at nine and a half and I've seen a spread at 10 and a half, regardless of what it is. It's a, it's a game that I think Illinois should be capable of blowing Duquesne out. Now I sit there, I sit here in my office and I say that I'm um, obviously, you know, uh, professor Healy said, uh, hopefully Illinois doesn't overlook Duquesne. And I just can't see how that could possibly happen. We all know, the ramifications of not making it uh, to the Sweet 16 this year. It's been 19 years. Um, it's been kind of the dark cloud hovering over Brad Underwood um, in his tenure, in his entire tenure here. So I'm hoping, you know, Duquesne, I don't think is a team that can, is capable of reaching 80, 85 points, uh, much less than 90 that we can get. And so while B, they did beat BYU yesterday. I wonder if it's as much BYU beating themselves. Again, they came out in that first half very timid. Like guys were scared of the limelight, scared of the spotlight, not ready for the moment of the tournament. So as long as I don't see that happening for us, because even if we start off slow, like we kind of did yesterday, I mean... Uh, Morehead State scored the first nine points of the game, and you know uh, Quincy and Ty Rogers were basically zeros that whole uh, that whole first half. But Terrence Shannon Jr. is just a madman right now. He's just a guy who's just not going to let us lose. And because of that, I don't, you know, I think, I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, Duquesne has a player, uh, Day Day Grant, who typically gives us trouble. And uh, Duquesne is very much defensively focused. So all of you who have been scouting BYU uh, when the brackets came out, you know, they're kind of the opposite. Duquesne is very gritty. They're going to try to slow the game down, slow the pace down. And quite frankly, a lot of teams try to do that against Illinois. But the way Illinois plays is so much fun that they can usually bait the other team to start playing in the similar style. So I'm curious to see uh, if that happens tomorrow. I don't think I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the Duquesne basketball team, but they certainly don't have the weapons that Illinois does to keep pace to, uh, for a really fast uh, offensive uh, game. So I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I think Illinois um, wins pretty handedly tomorrow, but this is not a team that you should take 
for granted uh, only because, again, they, as Professor Healy said, they haven't lost this month in the month of uh, March. Um, they're on a roll right now. They're super confident. You saw it yesterday. Now, they, you know, they almost give the game away in the second half, but, you know, they're a confidence bunch and they've got that uh, coach retiring bump. All that said, um, I would be very disappointed if we didn't win by at least 15, 15 points or so. Um, I just think our team, as it is right now, is super committed. Um, they know the path that's uh, before them. Yeah, they haven't really been involved with the uh, Illinois history and the lack of getting to the second weekend, but these guys love Coach Underwood, and they they know. You know, as much as they want to pretend like they block the noise out, they know. They know the stigma that comes with the Illinois program right now. So because of that, I'm going to say an Illinois win. Um, thank you guys all for watching. If you don't mind, uh, hit that subscribe button real quick. Uh, I might be coming on tonight just for a, like a live call-in, just vibes type of Friday night like I did a couple weekends ago. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. You know, you guys can chime in. We can talk about whatever you guys want, whether it's the basketball game tomorrow, what uh, the game we just played yesterday. Uh, the football spring practices are on, have started, and, uh, you know, be baseball season's five, six days away. Either way, we'll figure something out. If you don't mind, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Sorry about the technical difficulties. This always happens with me, and this is why I don't get paid for it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it should be a good game tomorrow. I'll be on edge. I wish the game was earlier. The game is going to be at 7.40 p.m. Central, so that means a lot of pacing around during the day. But uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know if I'll be doing a post game because, again, I've got the in-laws in town, so I might be able to uh, you know, sneak out finally and uh, go watch the game uh, at a bar or something. So we'll find out. Thank you all for watching. Take care.